the question. I wonder what the panel thinks of the proposition system. Uh, the question is what the panel thinks of California's fairly unique and extensive proposition and initiative system. <laughs> Well, it's, uh, and, and I just want to add a editorial comment. I lived in Massachusetts for two years, and I got my first ballot, and it was one page with like three things on it. And I was like, where's the rest? <laughs> uh, it is. Uh, I, I talked earlier about uh, uh, the culture of the state politically as part of our culture. Uh, again, it has very much to do with the fact that Californians, from my experience, don't trust government and figure it can't do much right, and have a lot of confidence in themselves. Uh, it has played a very, very important role in this uh, state, as you know. Uh, it, is a, it is a tool, I think, uh, like a lot of things, for great good or great evil. Um, Prop 13 obviously has fundamentally changed uh, this state forever, uh, and we're living with the consequences, for better or worse. Uh, voters are very skeptical of ballot measures. Uh, they are relatively easy to defeat, and we just saw that, I think, with Prop 93 and probably Prop 92. I think voters look at these things and go, you know, I'm probably not getting the whole story. There's the law of unintended consequences. And so if, if they doubt what's going on, they default to a no vote. And uh, that is a, a source of, of reassurance, certainly, to me. But, you know, look, they're not going to go away. It's, it's very much woven into uh, the history and the culture of the state politically. Well, when the initiative process was first started by Hiram Johnson in the early 1900s, it was a very progressive thing. It was a way for the California voters to have a say um, and to stop the mon monopolistic power of the railroad barons and all this. Um, but I think that over time, the initiative process has, has really gotten out of hand. Uh, in some years, it's been a battle of the millionaire versus the millionaire, because if you can get a bunch of dollars out there to get the signatures on a petition, you can get whatever you want onto the ballot. And as a result, we have this very unwieldy system with regard to our California budget. I know because I was chair of appropriations on the budget conference committee in the legislature, and uh, we had deficits in all the years that I was there and we were trying to balance this. But what we had was, over time, a, a time period, um, more and more of the budget being prescribed by the ballot. So now 40% of the budget uh, is prescribed for K-12 education. Now uh, there is a certain amount for local government. Um, and um, at this point, there is very, very little that we can actually play around with ourselves, um, in, oh, at least in, in state government, that there's very little freedom to really deal uh, with all the different categories within the budget and, and to balance it properly. And on top of that, there is this two-thirds vote for the budget. We are only one of three states that requires a two-thirds vote. So there you have another stranglehold. Basically, it's a tyranny of the minority because all it takes is six Republican votes to hold up a whole budget for the state of California, a $145 billion budget. So, I, you know, and I have to tell you that there were several proposals to reform this, even in very, very mild ways, and they came through uh, the Appropriations Committee when I was chair. Mild things like, how about doing a review for these initiatives before they go on to the ballot to see if they're even constitutional? And even that could not get a vote because to get something onto the ballot, you also need a two-thirds vote. So, you know, we just couldn't, couldn't get that going. Qualified initiative to amend the Constitution to no longer require a two-thirds vote. All you need is 50% plus one of the California electorate to vote for it. And I'll guarantee you, you won't be successful in doing that. The Democrat, I've been in politics in California for 40 years. The Republicans have controlled the State Assembly three of those 40 years, and the State Senate two of those 40 years. That's one party rule for a long, long time. That's why also would probably brought term limits in in the first place, because we all know it was the only way to get Willie Brown out of the Speaker's chair. In fact, term limits are almost an anti-bosses at one it is. Some, you know, backbench legislators stayed there for 12 years. The average time of a legislator's holds 
office when, when, when it was voluntary, when there was no term, it was no more than about 10 years. And they went off to either a higher office or about something better to do. And uh, But all you have to do is get a ballot measure, get a majority of Californians agree with what Judy just said, and it will be repealed.